What is urban geography? Today, we live in a highly urbanized world where every city is very complex and connected to other cities through transportation and technology. Urban geography is the study of these cities, and it focuses on how cities function, their internal systems and structures, and the external influences on them. This includes where cities are located and why, as well as the analysis of the patterns of land use. The settlements that have been created range in size and complexity of their functions. In order from smallest to largest, the settlements could be classified as a hamlet, village, town, city, or megalopolis. These sizes range from a hamlet, which is a very small agricultural community with a few basic services, to a megalopolis, which is a large cluster of cities with sprawling hinterlands and well-defined CBDs. Some of these cities are known as megacities because of their large populations of over 10 million. Previously, in the 1900s, no cities were ever that large. The uncontained growth of megacities located in less developed countries was attributed to the slums located on the periphery of these cities. This makes some megacities have a clear contrast in inequality, where the richest people live in the CBDs right next to the poorest people residing in the slums. However, despite these megacities, many developed countries can follow the settlement geography theory of rank size rule, where the nth largest city will be one n the size of the largest city. For example, with Germany, its largest city, Berlin, has a population of 3,460,725. Its second largest city, Hamburg, has a population of 1,786,448. The population of Hamburg is 51.6% of the largest city, which is roughly one half. Developing countries, on the other hand, don't usually follow the rank size rule. Instead, they tend to have one city that has a population much larger than the rest. The city is known as the primate city. Having one very large city leaves the rest of the country dependent on the primate city for economic stability as well as cultural and political services. Another important settlement geography theory is central place theory, which states that settlements are centers for economic trade and that the surrounding populations depend on the settlement in order to function. This theory, created by Walter Christaller, says that each settlement, or central place, is surrounded by a hinterland, which serves as the market area. The distance from the central place to the edge of the hinterland is the range, which is how far an individual is willing to travel to attain the service, and any individuals who could potentially use the service within the hinterland make up the threshold. Goods with low thresholds are part of a smaller central place, compared to goods and services with high thresholds, which are part of a larger central place. Two important conclusions were made from this theory. The first conclusion is that settlements of the same size are evenly spaced because they are in the center of a similar sized hinterland. Settlements of a larger size are spread farther apart because they have larger hinterlands. The second conclusion is that all settlements are part of an interdependent system. If one central place disappears, the surrounding central places hinterlands adjust to fit the needs of the consumers. Besides the two settlement geography theories, there are three different models of urban land use which explains how cities are structured on the land they are given. The first model created is the concentric zone model, which was made in 1923 by E.W. Burgess. This model depicts cities as rings that grow outward from the central business district, which is the center. The first ring is the zone of transition, from businesses and industries to residential areas. As the rings grow outward, the cost of residences increases so that the people furthest from the CBD are the richest, and the people living in the inner rings are the poorest. This model is explained by people's desire to have their own land, so that ones who can't afford the cost of transportation can live further out. The second model, which is a further development of the concentric zone model, is called the sector model, where each zone is a wedge, rather than a ring around the CPD. This model was created by Homer Hoyt in 1939. According to the model, the transportation and industry sector branches off from the CBD, with the lower class residences running alongside it. The high-class resident area branches out in the opposite direction of the lower-class areas, and the middle-class residences fill up the remaining space. The sector model takes into account transportation and environmental factors and how they would affect where people live, such as how the loud noise of the transportation sector keeps the high-class sector far away, since the people living in that area can afford to buy housing away from activity. Finally, the third model, which was created in 1945 by C.D. Harris and E.L. Ullman, is known as the Multiple Nuclei Model. This model states that rather than having just one area of growth, a city expands through several large nodes. This model takes into account the surrounding nodes and suggests that different people and different industries would cluster around different nodes based on interests and functionality. This in turn allows the nodes to influence the areas surrounding them, further affecting the development of an area. 
However, these models are only created based on the North American city's layout. Different parts of the world have different models for urban land use, based on cultural, economical, and political factors. European, Latin American, African, and Asian cities all have different city models. The model of urban land use of European cities follows the concentric zone model of the U.S., except for the fact that the higher class people live closer to the CBD and the lower class citizens live further out from the CBD. This is because the CBDs in Europe are full of rich cultural places and high-end shopping areas, unlike North American cities, where the CBD has become run down and ghettoized. The Latin American city model is like a mix of the sector model and the concentric zone model. The CBD is located in the center, but it is divided into two sectors, the market sector and the high-rise sector. From the CBD, a commercial spine branches out and is surrounded by the high-class residential sector. The rest of the model is composed of concentric zones of lower and middle class residences, where socioeconomic class decreases the further from the CBD you travel. Since many Latin American cities have overflowing populations, where many people live on the outskirts of the city in slums, this model demonstrates how some of the richest people in the city who live in the elite sector can live next to the poorest residents of the slums. In Africa, due to the heterozygous culture of the continent, it is hard to compose one model for all African cities. However, since many African cities were colonized by European superpowers, they tend to have a colonial CBD alongside their traditional CBD, with a market area beside it that serves as a commercial core. The residences surround the city in concentric rings, usually of mixed socioeconomic class. Still, many variations of this model exist due to the differences of cultures in different regions of Africa. Since many of the large Asian cities were founded by Europeans, they tend to follow the European model of spatial arrangements. Most large cities are centered around ports, with a western-style CBD surrounding it. A spine of high-class residences branches out from the port, and there is a large zone of mixed residences, businesses, and light industries. Most of the city's population can be found in the peripheral slums of, on the outskirts of the cities. This model demonstrates the great influence that Western societies have on many Eastern cities' urban land use, shaping their port cities to roughly follow the same layout. Clearly, there are many complex concepts to know about cities and urban land use, but hopefully now you are able to see and understand the connections made about cities, whether it's how they function or why they are located where they are.